Hello all. Several people have asked me to talk more about the 3D printed parts that I've made for this enclosure build. In other videos, I've talked about the mount that I made for the power supplies, as well as the connector panels that were 3D printed, so I won't talk about them here. One of the design goals that I have for this enclosure build is I want the back panel to be able to be removed after the system is built without having to disconnect a bunch of wires or unscrew a bunch of components. In order to remove the back panel, it has to be lifted up at an angle to pass by the connector panels as well as the power supply mount. The first part I'll talk about is the mount for the cooling fans. I'm going to mount two cooling fans in the enclosure, one up on the left and another one down on the right. My original thought was just to bolt the cooling fans to the enclosure, but that would block the back plate from coming out. The next thing I considered was mounting the fan onto the back plate, but then that would require some duct work out to the side and some way to seal it so that the air doesn't just circulate inside the enclosure. In the end, what I decided to do was to mount the fans on the outside of the enclosure. So I just made a simple mount for the fans, mostly to protect them. There's also a grill and a filter to keep dust and debris out. I'll drill a hole through the side of the enclosure to pass the cable through and it'll plug in on the inside of the enclosure. The fans will mount on the outside of the box and that way they'll be out of the way for removing the back plate. The next mount that I'll talk about is for the stepper drivers. Originally I was going to mount them to the base plate, but I didn't care for the way the wire management would work out coming off the top of the drivers and down to the board. Another option would have been to mount the drivers onto the sidewall, but again that would have caused the problem for removing the base plate without first removing the drivers off of the enclosure. I like the orientation of the drivers in a vertical stack. So what I came up with was a 3D printed mount. The mounting holes have a 33.6 millimeter pitch, which is evenly divisible by the 5.6 millimeter pitch of the holes in the base mounting plate. I also made some hold downs to secure the front of the stepper drivers. It keeps them level and there's a slot in the front so they can be adjusted to line up with the screw holes in the base mounting plate. The wiring for the stepper drivers will come off of the connectors that are on the connector panels on the front. It'll feed in through the wire duct and go to the connectors on each one of the stepper drivers. When removing the base plate, I can just unplug the connectors off of each of the drivers and all those wires and cables will stay with the enclosure while the back plate is removed with the stepper drivers. The third 3D printed mount I'll talk about is for the DB25 breakout board. It mounts in the right hand front panel and is for the field input output lines such as the homing switches and limit switches. The wires from the DB25 connector will go to the Mesa controller card. Since the controller card is going to be secured to the back plate, I also wanted to secure the DB25 connector to the back plate so that they could all be removed together when the back plate comes out. The mount that I made for the DB25 breakout board has got sliding dovetails in the horizontal and in the vertical axis. The sliding dovetails allow the DB25 connector to self-center in the slot on the connector panel. The base mounting plate has slots and indexing holes. This allows for fore and aft adjustment of the connector in the panel. Since I've got the Mesa controller card right here, we'll take a look at the mount that I made for it. The Mesa card has got mounting holes that are on an imperial pitch and the base mounting plate has a metric pitch. Since the holes would not line up to screw it directly down to the base mounting plate, it needed some sort of an adapter. 
I put mounting holes in the adapter that will line up with the 5.6 millimeter pitch of the base mounting plate. And I also avoided putting any on the sides so it wouldn't take up any extra width in the box. On the back, I've put hexagon countersunk holes to accept nuts for the three millimeter screws to fasten the controller card down to the mounting plate. The last mount that I'll take a look at is for the relay boards. With the relay boards on the DIN rail mounted this way, they take up quite a bit of space. And if I was to mount them this way, I would have problems with the high voltage, high current wires running into the low voltage wires, which may induce some electrical noise. Once again, the solution that I chose is to stack the relay boards. This has the advantage of making a smaller footprint in the enclosure and it also keeps the high current wires with the 120 volts separated from the low current wires which connect to the controller card. The downside to stacking the relay boards is that the upper board will block access to the lower one. You won't be able to see the LED indicators to see if a particular relay is active and you also can't gain access to the terminal screws for the wire connections. The mount that I made has two trays for the relay boards. The upper tray is hinged so it can swing up out of the way and you can access the terminal screws as well as view the indicator lights for the relays. The hinge has detents in two positions, one horizontal where it normally resides and another one rotated up 110 degrees for access to the lower board. The detents are created by two indentations in the hinge and this piece of plastic, which is a printed in place spring. I also created four holes through the body to accept nylon wire ties. This will facilitate wire management for the wires coming off the top relay board. To attach the mount onto the DIN rail, I had to make a DIN rail clip that I'll glue onto the bottom of the mount with CA glue. The DIN rail clip has a couple of features that allow it to work well with this mount. One is the extended release arm, which allows it to be removed from the DIN rail without any tools. The other one is that it can be attached to the DIN rail by dropping straight down. Unlike most parts that attach to a DIN rail that have to be tilted up at an angle before they are clipped into place. I had to avoid a tilting DIN rail clip because the overhang on the mount would hit on the base mounting plate during installation. The last few minutes of the video are screen capture images of the CAD models and the 3D printed parts on a rotating stand both by themselves and with the mating parts. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Take care until next time.